religion is deception, it's bondage. We're not religious. We have a relationship. And if you truly say you love him, then you worship him. You seek his presence. So you can't say that you love him and not follow him. The Bible gives us a message from the Lord. He said, and this is the message. Those who say that you believe me and don't follow me, you lie. See, the entrance to the kingdom is justice and righteousness, not goodness. Not works. It's justice and righteousness. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be disappointed when they get before God and he says, I don't know you. I don't know you. But Lord, I did this. I did that. Come on, I was a good person. I don't know you. You never fulfilled my will. You did your own. You never sought me with all of your heart. You never worshiped me. You put idols between us. The only thing you're interested in is a job, your family, fame, everything else but me. See, those who don't have God first, they won't be first. There's a great thing going on right now. Let me tell you. That's why there's a shaking and quaking. It's to wake up people. To get them closer to the Lord. The word says that he's going to shake everything in the heavenlies and on the earth. To shake them so that only those that are not shaken can be removed. See, God's coming for a bride. A bride. Well, there's a bride that adorns the bridegroom. See, many people say, I know him but they don't really know him. They know of him, amen, but they don't know him. Because when you know him, there's conversation, there's fellowship, there's face-to-face, -face, there's dreams and visions. This is not about religion. It's about relationship. But God is raising up warriors now, not wimps. Amen? There is a battle going on, and there's something very, very important. We must begin to discern your fight. Discerning your fight. Everyone say, discerning my fight. In other words, you've got to discern whether you're fighting for, the, for a right or righteousness. See, the world looks at right. They, man, they say they're right. This is, even though they believe something that's wrong, they still say it's right. So they fight for right. We fight for righteousness. Amen. There's a difference. The kingdom of God is always fighting for righteousness. We're not trying to prove who's right. There's only one right. You ain't got to prove he's right. Amen. <laughs> he's right. That's all that's to it. You can give every excuse, argument, whatever, but he's the only one that's right. You'll lose every argument. Discerning your fight, whether you're fighting for what's right or fighting for what's righteous. And again, the world doesn't know what righteousness is. You proclaim to be a believer and you don't know what righteousness is, you're in trouble. Because the word believe means to what? Follow. Well, I believe, but I don't read the Bible. You're an idiot. Don't be offended. Repent and try again. You're deceived. Taken captive in your mind and your hearts. Well, I believe in Jesus. Well, then why don't you hear what he has to say? Why don't you know the boundaries? You know, that was the first thing the Lord said to me when I had a visitation from him. 1993 at 2.15 p.m. on July 15th, June, April. Thank you. I knew it was one of those months. The first words out of his mouth when he came to visit me, his presence was radiating, ripping through me. I realized it was his love. It was his presence I was looking for my whole life. Fulfilled me instantly. Words, first words out of his mouth was, Guy, my Bible is true. No man had to tell me that. I never believed the Bible. I thought it was a story because that's what I was told when I was a kid. That's nothing but a story. Well, I want truth. Religion told me it was a story. Ah, you don't need to read the Bible. It's just a story. Boy, did they lie. They might not have lied on purpose, but they were deceived. And they pass that lie on and on. Same thing with once saved, always saved. That lie is still being passed on. Well, I'm saved forever. Oh, really? The Word doesn't say that. The Word says many will come before me and say, Lord, 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 I did this, this, and that. And he's going to say, I don't know you. 
Why? Because you practice lawlessness. Because lawlessness is rebellion towards his word and rejecting his presence. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why there's a shaking and quaking all over the world. This is a sting operation from God, not from man. <laughs> Hello? This is a sting operation from God, not from man. Oh, glory. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. My son, if you receive my words, now son means son and daughter, amen. If you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom, wisdom, wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. If you incline your ears to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, that means you're going to know what to do and you're going to know how to do it. If you, you cry out for discernment, whoa, and lift up your voice for understanding. So discernment is the area of combination of wisdom and understanding. But it's the ability to divide what's good, what's right, what's unclean, what's holy, or what's unclean and what's clean. Amen? It's, it's that area where you're able to judge. Discernment is judge. Everyone say discernment is judge. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. <laughs> Discernment. Wow. It's the keenness of insight and judgment. It is the ability to judge right from righteousness, from good and evil. It's the ability to dis discern times and seasons of God. Amen? It's the ability to discern what pleases him and displeases him. Then you'll understand. See, the fear of the Lord is not a, 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 a horror fear. It's reverence, honor, and respect. See, the world doesn't understand the fear of the Lord. They just say whatever they want. They do whatever they want. There's no reverence to God Almighty. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge under and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He's a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge, knowledge is pleasant to you. Discretion will preserve you. That's discernment. Understanding will keep you and deliver you from the way of evil. From men who speak perverse things. From those who leave the path of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness. Who rejoice in doing evil and delight in perversity of the wicked. Whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths. Discernment is essential. What do we need? Discernment of what? We're discerning your fight. If you can't discern what fight you're in, whether you're fighting for good for the world or you're fighting for righteousness of God. James chapter 3, verse 13, please. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Now, that is so powerful. Don't lie against it. See, people, one of the things the enemy loves to do is bring reasoning to an individual to justify, even to justify your reasoning. Hello? Hello? He likes to justify. Why? Because he, he wants to cause you to fight for what's right, not what's righteous. Isn't the world fighting for what's right, not what's righteous? We're fighting for what's righteousness. They're fighting for what's right, even though it ain't right. They're still fighting for it. Verse 15. 
This wisdom does not descend from above. Hello. But is what? Earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. In other words, you're about yourself, self-seeking. But the wisdom that is from above is first purer than peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who what? Make peace. See, demonic wisdom, which is what to do or what to say, is a self-seeking. It brings confusion, brings frustration, because it causes an individual to walk in the flesh. Self-justification of reactions, causing the fight for right, not for righteousness. The wisdom that's from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to surrender, manifesting righteousness and peace. Doesn't the Bible say peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit? That's the kingdom of God, right? So what happens is then there's a nullification of in the spirit and then reverse into the flesh. Hallelujah. Not justifying the reasoning of the mind. In other words, they're not justifying the reasoning of their mind falling into an offense state of being. Always, again, the inability to discern. That's why you must be filled with the Spirit. That's why the Bible says forsake not to assemble. Why? So we stay filled. Filled. How do you get filled with the Spirit? You worship. Without worship, you can't get filled. And believe me, after you get filled, the enemy waits for you. <laughs> he wants to unplug you, to drain you. The world wants to drain you. We're hard-pressed on every side. The Bible tells us that God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and not yourself. In the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trickery of the devil. You know how many people say they're Christians and don't even know what the full armor of God is? They don't realize it. Because see, we don't fight flesh and blood, do we? We fight powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places, disembodied spirits, demons. Addiction is not a, a disease, it's a demon. Once that demon is removed, because that came out of me, I saw it, then you never use again. Same thing with the spirit of nicotine and pornography and everything else. Those are demons. It says right here, verse 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age and spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. We are, this is our battle. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. We're to be strong in the Lord, not ourselves, discerning the influence from the unseen realm. <laughs> it tries to, it uses humanity as puppets. Why? So they battle against one another. You know, if you can unzip the physical realm and zip, go into the spirit realm, and you see all of these military, you'd see demons, powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places attached to them, using them. Man, after my visitation from the Lord, it was very difficult for me to function in this world for about two months. Everywhere I went, I saw these demonic forces, almost like on people's backs, sucking the life out of them. I would have dreams and visions as the Lord began to teach me the different types of demons and spirits. John chapter 6 and verse 62. What then if you should, uh, you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. So if you're trying to fight 
within the flesh, with the flesh, does it profit anything? No, it just creates more. This is where demons come and get fed because they get fed by emotion. Do you ever notice that when an argument begins, usually most of the time it really excels? His spirits come to get fed. And they promote, they promote that argument. Then they ponder and beat you uh, afterwards to try and create more and more and bring justification and reasoning in your mind. It is the spirit who gives life to flesh prophets nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Wow. The spirit gives life to flesh prophets nothing. No fight of the flesh. <laughs> in other words, don't fight flesh with flesh. Because it's going to profit what? Nothing. Nothing at all. Never does and never will. You know, there was a song by, I don't know if it was Kenny Rogers. What was it? You were singing it the other day. <laughs> Who was it? Yeah. He was in a poker hand. He said, you got to know when to fold. You know, know when to <laughs> Know when to fold them. Well, you got to know when to fight and when not to fight. <laughs> you got to discern whether you're in the flesh or in the spirit. Before you start anything. <laughs> Don't react, but respond. <laughs> Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Or when you feel like it? How about when you don't feel like it? How about when things are going bad? Rejoice. Why? Because you begin to re rejoice. You're moving the presence of darkness and you're bringing in the Spirit of God. Then you're getting refreshed and renewed. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say rejoice and let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is what? At hand. He's with you. Be anxious for everything. For nothing. Stinking nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Why? What is anxiousness? It's fear. It's anxiety. It's stress. Amen? Be anxious. It's, it's losing control. People get anxious because they're losing control over something. I don't have control over this. Hello? Not able to see it through uh, the eyes of the Lord. Only through carnal eyes are they able to see. They are unable to trust, rest, and wait. They always believe they must do something. It's called anxiousness. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Now here's the kick. Are you ready for this? And the peace of God, which surpasses our crazy understanding, so you don't have to figure it all out. You don't have to understand everything. I get all these excuses sometimes. Well, you don't understand. I don't care. I don't need to understand. Does everybody get it? Everybody's trying to get everybody to understand how they're feeling or what they're going through. You don't need to. The Bible says, cast your cares on the Lord, not on man. Oh, glory. <laughs> well, wait a minute now. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your thoughts or your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Vitally important. <laughs> Be anxious for, which is what? Fearful? Losing control. Many people fall into the area of fear because they're losing control of something. When God is actually trying to say, let me take this from you. Let me take this. Let me have this. Let me have this. No, I don't want to be able to do it. It's mine. Like a baby that's holding something. You know? It's mine. Mine, mine, mine. Continuing in the fight of right. Not in righteousness. Falling into the contentious trap of anger, arguments, and frustration. There is not a need to understand everything. Amen? Good gosh. We, we go bonkers if we try to understand everything. You know, they have, they have all of these things that are trying to bring so much confusion in a world of frustration. You know, that, well, this one says the world is flat. This one says it's square. This one says it's a triangle. This one says this. This says, I mean, there's so many goofy things. All distractions. There's only one truth. There's only one way. And there's only one life. And that's Jesus. 
You hold on to him, you ain't got to worry about, you're not going to fall off the earth, you know. <laughs> and you're not going to get hit by a tidal wave and all this other stuff. I mean, it's pretty amazing what's going on because God is even bringing judgment in Mecca. I don't know if you've seen that. Where they w walk around the Muslim, the, uh, that demonic block, you know. Supposedly some black rocks in there was a meteor and they worship it. So you got a gazillion, all of these Muslims walking around it all the day. And it's been flooded. It's been uh, all kinds of bugs, roaches, um, grasshoppers. All kind, and people are getting, and they're still going to try to walk around, and they're getting blown away. They're praying to a rock. They worship a rock. This is called false religion, doctrines of demons. It was an Ishmael mistake. Remember, the Lord told Abraham, look at, I'm going to bless you with a kid. Now just hang on. And his wife became anxious, said, sleep with my maidservant and produce a kid. Oh. So he agreed. Psh, dummy. Produce an Ishmael. Ishmael started the Islamic religion. That wouldn't have happened if his wife obeyed, was submissive. But she got pushed, didn't she? See, the devil pushes, the spirit leads. But God was merciful. He said he'd bless him and everything else. But you know what he said? He said he'd be a hunter. He'd be angry at humanity. This is what Ishmael became. Is that happening now? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Let's speak it together, please. But know this, that in the what? Last days, perilous times will come. Are we in the last days? Oh, we're in the last moments. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, Unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without control over yourself. Brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn what? Away. You know, when I was in Cambodia, I met a lot of monks. Sweet people, very humble people, but false humility. And they worshipped every day by giving flowers to these statues and stuff. I thought, wow, this is crazy. Buddhas. Things to that degree. I told you about the, my seamstress. I went into a get some clothes done and my seamstress come in and said, hey, hi, guy, how you doing? I said, great, I, I need something done. Okay, no problem. She walked back and got two cups of coffee. I think, oh, man, she's going to bring me some coffee. How sweet. She walks by me, turns around, goes to this Buddha statue, takes the two cups of coffees that were there and puts two more out there. I said, what are you doing? She goes, I'm, I'm offering coffee to Buddha. I said, he's a fat, jolly statue here. He's a demon in this thing. I said, and the other thing is he hasn't drank the first two cups of coffee you gave him. Why are you bringing him two more? She got upset, walked in the back, laid those two cups down. What do you want? I thought, boy, I ain't going to leave my clothes here. <laughs> but she did a good job anyways. But this is how deceptive the enemy is. This is how... Stupid people are because they don't know the truth. They're not connected to the spirit of truth. So they just believe everything. They're still li listening to all of this media that is nothing but false prophets promoting anger, hatred, strife. They're not telling people the truth. You've got to search the truth because the secular media isn't going to tell you the truth. They're all demonic forces. People don't realize. It. Look, at this is a battle between light and darkness. Christ and Antichrist. And until you awaken that, you'll be taken out with them. 
It says, for these are the sort who creep into households, marriages, ministries, and turn people and take them captive into corruptible men and women and load them down with sins and led away with various lusts and desires and false religions. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Truth sets you free. Free. They fight for what they believe is right, not knowing righteousness, causing arguments and divisions, drawing many into the fight for right, not discerning the true fight. Aren't you glad we're not religious? Sheesh, I had enough of that when I was a kid. Of course, I didn't obey it anyways. The only thing that still held on with me, and every time when I was stealing something, where I was, thou shalt not steal. But I didn't have the power to say no. Thou shalt not lie. But I didn't have the power to say no. I didn't want to do it, but I had no choice. You might say, well, you did have a choice. Well, I, 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 yeah, I did have a choice. I could lie against a lie, or I could steal something else. But see, we couldn't overcome temptations because we didn't have the power from above. Now, I was born in a crazy family. And in this crazy family, I mean, you know, whatever you did, even if it was illegal, as long as you didn't get caught, it was good. Hallelujah. I won't go any further than that. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in what? In due time, that means his time. Casting all of your cares. All, 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 not some. Every day, look, at we got cares about something every single day. You want the right decision to make? Give it to him, and he returns it. Tells you what to do. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you because he loves you. It says very something. Be sober, which means alert. Be vigilant, consistent, because your adversary, the devil and his demons, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom they may devour. Whom they may what? Devour, cast your cares, lose control, get, get, walk away from the control factor, which is nothing but in the flesh, and discern your fight. Stay alert and stay consistent. Amen? Stay filled with the Word of God. Putting the Lord before you in everything you do. Know the Word. Speak the Word. Eat the Word. You know, the Word is not just written Word. It's a person. His name is Jesus. He's called the Word. 1 Corinthians 9, please, verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. Let me tell you, when you're fighting in the flesh, you beat in the air. Ain't nothing happening. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. Oh, so you better practice what you preach. Amen? Hallelujah. Fighting the flesh beats the air. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 7. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons and daughters. For what son or daughter is there whom the father does not chasten or correct? But if you are without correction or chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not children of God. Why? Because God corrects us all, doesn't he? He puts us in line with his divine order. Furthermore, we have had ha uh, human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as it seemed best to them. But the Lord, our Father, for our profit, 
that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the moment or the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it, re it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So God trains you by chastening. It's not a punishment. It's a correction. Correction brings what? Protection. See, people that are not willing to re re cor receive correction, well, the Bible says if you're not willing to receive correction, you're stupid. But those that are will willing to receive correction will get protection from God. Why? Because they're walking in the path of God. They're walking in the will of God. And this is what you must ask yourself. Am I doing God's will or my will? Is this, am I discerning the right fight? Am I fighting in the flesh or in the spirit? Am I really, am I pleasing God? Or am I pleasing myself? Am I pleasing other man? Am I pleasing man instead of God? Who's first in my life? What idols are in my life? Amen? To endure is to accept correction, exposing the fight of the flesh. Amen? And train the heart to fight in the spirit. Ephesians 4 and verse 17. This I say, therefore, in testifying to the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the world or the Gentiles walk, in the fertility of their thoughts and their minds, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart and hardening of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you've not learned Christ then. If you indeed you have heard from him and learned from him, that you've been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts of the world. And be renewed in the spirit of your thoughts and in your minds. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and what? Holiness. Wow. Righteousness and holiness. Colossians chapter 2 verse 20. Therefore, if, in, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why as though living in the world do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which, are, which perish with the using, according to the commandments and the doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion false humility and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. That's that false religion stuff, that false humility stuff. Hallelujah. First John chapter 2, and we'll close here. So many people are still praying to the dead. Still praying to Uncle Joe and Aunt Mary, Mary, doing rosaries and all the other stuff which have no meaning whatsoever, none. Just brings a curse on you and your family. Why? Because people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 1 John chapter 2, verse 26. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing, the eternal presence and power of truth of God Almighty, which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. And who does not practice righteousness is not born of him, but is still of the world. Amen? Discerning your fight, whether you're fighting in the flesh or in the spirit, and what you're fighting for. 
Are you fighting for what's right according to the world? Or are you fighting for what's righteousness according to God? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that this seed that's been imparted be protected by the blood of the Lamb, that the Holy Spirit would bring it to remembrance as we go forth this day and wherever we go. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.